Hold on tight for the next hour. You're entering into a place, a zone called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, it's move like you got a purpose. Affirmative. Affirmative. It's time for the Greg Anthony Show on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, people of all races, colors, and creeds. That's you. Hey, Greg Anthony here on the greatest show on earth, the Greg Anthony Show. And yes, it is the greatest show on earth. And you know why? Because it's better than listening to that darn White House task force tell you that this guy got hit by a 300-pound pig falling from a rooftop and he died of the coronavirus. (laughs) Yes, it is the greatest show on earth because it's better than listening to the Pope. You heard him the other day. He was in Vatican Square alone doing an exorcism. And then the devil said something like, hey, that's the pot calling the kettle black. (laughs) Yeah, it's the greatest show on earth, folks. And it's better than listening to one of your fellow Americans. You know, one of those thinking people who think on their own, go outside for a nice walk. And I'm walking down the street and they say, hey, she's got a stick in her hand. Stay away. Stay six feet away and don't breathe. Oh, my God, this world, this world. And oh, yes, it's better than listening to Fox and CNN with their daily death reports. You know, they're like uh, funeral directors. Today, I'd like to tell you people, there's 3,261,301 people, persons that died. And we're going to tell you each name. (laughs) Yeah, right. I haven't heard one name. But anyway. I was also the other day watching one of these programs, and they reminded me of an important fact, that it was Mickey Mouse's birthday. (laughs) And you wonder why people think America's in trouble. I mean, forget the COVID virus, but you know what? People are looking. How can these people celebrate the birthday of a make-believe rodent? You know, and, and secondly, folks, I really don't care. You know, give me their death reports over that. In fact, I wish that mouse would die. I really mean that. Right now, it's all death and dying. I wish he'd die. Yeah. Maybe for some poison cheese or something. Yeah, let him die. And guess what? If he did, they'd say it was a COVID virus death. You bet. Mickey Mouse died today of COVID virus. But anyway, folks, the world is upside down. Really, it is. I mean... People that want to go out have to stay in. People that don't want to go out, go outside. Think about it. Agoraphobics. You know what? They had the fear of their being at home. Have you ever had that fear? Well, now you know what it's like. But they're outside. They're going, finally, we can go out. There's nobody there. How about claustrophobics? Yeah, try to get on an elevator. They're going up and nobody's going on elevators. But all the claustrophobics are out going, hey, I can finally ride up to Trump Tower and down without being afraid, and all you extroverts locked away, locked away. But anyway, this world is crazy, isn't it? And, you know, more and more people, folks, are waking up to the fact that the coronavirus is being used to curtail your freedoms. Guess what? Yes, I can't go out again. I can't go out and play. Yes. And they're saying it's fake. Yes, I've heard that. And even Dr. Scott Jensen And he's a Republican state senator from Minnesota. He said, for example, he said doctors have been ordered by the U.S. government to label all deaths as coming from the coronavirus. Okay. Makes it easy on them. I mean, you got to feel sorry for these doctors sometimes. They got to make a decision. You know, did he die of a spleen injury or was it, you know, the broken leg? Did he die of a heart attack or was it a respiratory disease? Now it's pretty easy. Coronavirus. They can go off and think of something else, you know. And there was a a doctor that sent in a quote to this show on my other uh, show I do in the daytime. He said, "I work in healthcare. When patients in two hospitals I work at die, if they have any respiratory issues, we are ordered to put COVID on the death certificate." 
These patients we never even tested for the virus. Cancer, trauma, blood loss, deaths are now all forgotten about. We don't care anymore. <laughs> no, nothing matters. It's all COVID virus, isn't it? Nothing matters. You wake up and that's all you think about. But anyway, let me tell you this. There's a lot of talk about death and dying these days. And it made me think, you know, really, I mean, when you go outside, even if you can't go outside, do you ever think, when am I going to die? People are always thinking that. I know they are because I do. Is, it, is today the day I'm going to die? But, you know, death, folks, really isn't that bad. Because once you die, I mean, what is there? It's, it's, I've, you know, been dead for millions of years before I was born, and I don't re remember anything. So it's probably not that bad, but it's that getting to death that's driving people crazy. And now it's even driving them crazier. I mean, can't you imagine every day you wake up and you go, my God, the world is going to end. Everybody's going to die. But let me tell you something. Death usually happens, and it usually comes when you least expect it. And I figured this out over the years that not everybody in the world dies at the same time. Yeah. And looking at the statistics, since they're talking about death every day, it's about 7,500 people a day die in America every year, every day. Imagine how many in a year. And it's impossible to, you know, feel remorse for that. I mean, we're not built that way. I'm just getting over my Aunt Amy's death, and she died six months ago. And, you know, I can't deal with 3,000 others in a day, every day. And if you're like me, it's been how many days have we been listening to this? I've got it marked on my wall. I mean, I got it. It's like a prison cell. So here I am thinking about that, death and dying. And then, of course, you got to think about where you're going after death. Yeah. Well, you know what? There's so many different ideas. Some people think they're going to heaven. You know, the guy you've talked to, the guy all the time, you're in a bar and he says, God, I've been doing some terrible things. I'm going to hell. <laughs> you know, well, and then Buddhists think, oh, you know, they're going, they're coming back as something else, hopefully a human being, not a worm. But there's so many different ideas. And I just started to think that maybe what you really think you're going to, you know, if you think you're going there, that's going to happen. So if you think you're going to go to hell, you're going to hell. It's an easier way to do it. And since I've had all this time to think, haven't you been thinking about crazy things during this COVID virus thing? Waiting for your $1,200 check? <laughs> yes, they're paying you off. It's a payoff to shut you up. They don't want problems with you people. What they want is you to just take the money and forget about it. But I've never gotten money from anybody that doesn't want something in return. You know, I had a boss one time, and I said, give me a $2,000 loan. I regretted that the rest of my life. You don't know what I did for that $2,000. Can you imagine what the government's going to force you to do for $1,200? So watch what you take. That's all I say. But it's crazy. It is driving me insane. Right. Some of the things I've been thinking about, why do Hasidic Jewish women cut their hair after they get married and then wear a black wig. Can somebody tell me that? You know, in fact, I'm half Jewish. I was born half Jewish and half Catholic, which makes it difficult because one day I'm thinking, you know, Jesus was a prophet. The next day I'm thinking he was a Messiah. And, you know, it's confusing. People on both sides don't like me. <laughs> Can you sympathize with that? Then I was thinking, you know, stupid things like, uh, did you know that in 1830, we're going back a little ways. William Hickinson was the first man killed by a railroad train. <laughs> they would have marked it coronavirus, but yeah. So I started thinking, wow, let me, you know, I got time on my hands here. They're talking about death. I want to know who was the first man killed by an airplane. Then it got even worse. I wanted to know who was the first man that got killed by a horse and buggy. Then I wanted to know who got killed when he was tying his shoes in the jungle and he got bitten by and killed and eaten by a laughing hyena. <laughs> you know, I need laughing hyenas. I mean, I'm going to start bringing in a laugh machine in, the, in this show here. I never know when people are laughing out there. If you're not laughing, that's okay, because I got you covered. Since we're talking about death. You know, you ever go to a comedy club? I used to do that, yes. And it was humiliating sometime when nobody laughed. 
And I used to say, boy, it was like a morgue out there. Boy, I tell you, they were dead. All of them. I, they, they're like zombies. Dead, dead, and dying. And then I go backstage, another comedian was there. And he goes, wow, did I kill them out there, man? They were laughing. So we got you covered. We kill you if you're laughing. And we kill you if you don't laugh. So don't go to a comedy club. It's a vulgar place, really vulgar. I've always thought that about comedy clubs. Very, very vulgar. But anyway, we clean it up here on the radio. And we do that for reasons. Because there's good people listening. All the public out there is listening to us. And you know what? What are we talking about? We've got a group of people in this world. I mean, American, the population is obsessed throughout the years with security, safety, crime. It's a neurotic population. And now, look at us. What is with this fear of germs? I mean, can you believe this? They got you washing your hands 20 times a day. They got you worrying about touching a doorknob. You know, I've seen people, they roll up their sleeves if they don't have gloves on, and they're trying to get the door open. I say, wait a second, let me get to you. I'm brave. I'm 007. I'll open that door with my hands. I'm not afraid because my immune system is working. My boys have been trained to fight off these criminals who are trying to invade my body. And it happens every day, folks, in your life. That's what goes on. America's a warring nation. We've been at war all but 20 years of our existence, and that's for peace. But listen, that's the same thing going on in your body ever since you were a kid. You got these boys. I got boys. You know, now I'm going to get in trouble with the thought police here, the word police. But if you're a girl, you got girls in there fighting for you. The girls are fighting for you. I got boys in there fighting for me every day, keeping me you know, keeping me healthy, fighting off these criminal germs that are attacking me every day. I mean, they they come at you when you don't even know, when you're sleeping, you know? I try to give my boys inside at least an hour rest every day, you know, a little nap. But anyway, this is going on. But if you don't let them work, if you don't let them do their thing, what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? They're going to let their guard down. You know, just like an army that goes to sleep, that they get invaded, and pretty soon you're sick. Pretty soon you got a cold. Pretty soon you can't go outside. Because if you got a cold, and imagine, imagine this. You know, I thought about this. What happens when you sneeze? You think the guy next to you is going to go, God bless you? Oh, no, that's over. He's going to go, get the heck out of here. I don't want to talk to you again, Ralph. Get out of here. You sneeze one more time, you're dead. You know, what? we've got to change what we say after people sneeze now. We can't say, God bless you. By no means did God bless you to sneeze. No way. And this goes on. The other day, I was going to walk into the store, and I had to sneeze. I had to wait two hours before I went in. <laughs> but anyway, back to my, my little boys inside, fighting off these diseases. How do you... How do you build up that. Well, you don't do it by sitting at home. They're going to get lazy. In fact, they were talking to me the other day and said, you better get outside and you better get outside and start fighting, you know, and get out there so we can have something to do. And, you know, I'm going to tell you how I built up my immune system when I get back. I'm, I'm sure you're waiting for that. It's very important these days to know that. And I'll be back in 60 seconds. By the way, go to Greg Anthony's journal.wordpress.com and you can get a lot of my shows and all my articles back in three minutes on CRN3 When you really want Italian food, you've got to get to Columbo's. Columbo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club. Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Be the little one's mother. Yes, these can be trying times, especially when your little precious says... Mom, I'm denied. 
Denied? Denied? Well, call 323-254-9138. Again, 323-254-9138. Then motor on over to Columbo's. Yes, the faithful, friendly, fabulous Columbo's folks. Fix some fixes that will thrill the family fabulously. Yay! Nothing better than a Columbo's pepperoni and sausage pizza, meatballs and spaghetti, scintillating steaks, flavorful fish specialties, Columbo's Italian family recipes, the world's greatest meatballs, and so much more, and all for takeout. Yeah! 323-254-9138. Columbo! This is the Entertainment Answer. Need to keep the kiddos still and engaged for a few hours? Well, a reminder that Disney's Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, is on Blu-ray and digital. Rated PG, Maleficent is a stunning film to watch. Very few studios create other worlds like Disney. The attention to detail engulfs the viewer and pulls you in. Costumes, makeup are just one element that really elevates this film into a grand experience. And then, of course, there's Angelina Jolie as Maleficent. So amazing. For the Entertainment Answer, I'm Matt Mungle. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. This is Dave Hull. To get your signed copy of Hullabaloo, The Life and Misadventures of L.A. Radio Legend Dave Hull, oh, that's me, call the Dave Hull Group at 760-320-4434, and within days, your copy will be in your hands. 600 pages leather-bound. That's 760-320-4434. Don't miss out. 760-320-4434. Call now. Okay, Greg Anthony here on the greatest show on earth. Yeah, we're not going to give you any of that stuff you get on the mainstream news. I don't even want to get into the alternative news. You can do that on your own. You're a big boy and girl, and you can get all that information. There's so much of it out there. I mean, some people believe that this is a fake. Other people believe it's real. I'm not going to get in the way of what people believe. All I know is I'm having fun with it because, you know, you got to have at least an hour a week. That's what you get when you're in prison, right? You get an hour a day to go out. Well, I decided that I'd give you a different look at this because I think it's rather crazy what's going on. If you ask me, I think it's stupid. But anyway, that's me. And I've always, you know, I never have gone along with the majority because usually you're wrong when you do. But anyway, I was getting into that system, this, neur this neuroses. I mean, this, this COVID virus has brought it out in America. I mean, everybody's fri I mean, people are with masks. Uh, I mean, you can't go somewhere and it's not going to end. This is, you know, you think one day the emperor over in Washington is going to go, okay, people, you can go out and everything's going to be back to normal. No, no, this social distancing, whatever they call it, it's going to keep going. And you know what? You think you're going to get, uh, you know, going to have big assemblies and things like that, you know, but it's really good for people like me. Like, let's say I get called to go to a comedy club and there's only five people in there. I'll just say, it's the COVID virus. <laughs> you know, there, it's not me. It's not my material. It's not anything, you know? And then again, people are really trying to figure out how can we live online? Well, I'll let, let the bigger thinkers figure that one out. But anyway, this idea of fear of germs. And I told you, I'm not frightened of this. I'm not one of these people that are frightened because I have an immune system. My boys inside of me fight so hard and I've trained them. Well, it happened by accident, but I got to tell you how it happened. I lived on a dairy farm in Wisconsin. I grew up, you know, a kid on a dairy farm, 250 acres. 
And I used to go up in the hayloft, and I went up there to watch the birds, and then I'd see the cats chase the birds, never catch them. Then the dogs would come in and chase the cats, and I would chase the dogs. Well, one day, I tripped over a a hay bale, and there's a huge door in a hayloft, right? A huge door. And below you usually have a truck where you dump the hay bales. Well, this day, there was a manure spreader. Luckily, it was full because I fell headlong into a manure spreader completely covered. It was like swimming in manure. From that day on, my my immune system after that took care of everything. Nothing was worse than that. Any disease that came, boy, my immune system told me at night, don't worry about that. You gave us the biggest test in your life. The real, the story is you got to allow yourself to get out, you know, and fight these germs off. If you just sit at home, they're going to get lazy and you're going to die. It's that simple. But anyway, enough with that. We're all neurotic, even me. I have to admit, I give in sometimes. Today, I used a hand sanitizer. You know, my dog wouldn't even allow me to get near him. You know, he's used to come and licks my hand. And anyway, the dogs, they're having trouble. Nobody's walking them. They're, we're, they're giving up on humans. We're no longer their best friends. You know, this is really getting to a point where... I'm going to say what I think. I think it's a big reality show. That's why Trump was elected. He was a good reality star. I neither like Donald Trump or dislike him. I I don't like any. I don't even care about politicians. They're just puppets. In fact, who should be blamed is you, the public. Yes, the public should be blamed. If these are the best idiots we have, then it's not their fault. I mean, and where are all the people? that are supposedly the righteous, the conscious, have all this. There's none of them anymore in America. Forget about it. We got You got what you chose, and this is what you get. You know, Sit at home until they tell you to go out. Take your $1,200 and wait to what they do to you. The owners are going to do something, and I'm waiting. You know, It's going to give me a lot to talk about here. But anyway, I was thinking about this. I, I was really thinking, my goodness, why did this happen? People ask me all the time, why? And, you know, I started thinking, wow, they're asking me. I better have an answer. I think these elites, these bored, you know, these rich people and all of these priests that are involved too, and the high-level priests, I always get the Vatican involved because of my days in Rome where they almost killed me, you know, on a bombing. Thank you. And I'm thinking to myself, why do they do this? Well, they're bored. They used to only take it out on their slaves and their servants, but now they got all these toys. They can do it online. They can do it to the whole world. And boy, they sure are (laughs) taking us for a ride, aren't they? Hey, listen, I got a guest coming back, Brian David Anderson. We're going to chat a lot. Thank goodness you won't have to listen to another half hour of this, right? I know that's what somebody's saying. Well, come back anyway. Greg Anthony Show on CRN3. Hey folks, Greg Anthony here, and I'm a firm believer in looking outside the box when it comes to keeping myself healthy, wealthy, and wise. And that's why I recommend you turn to a company called TriVortex Technology. And lately, I tried a TriVortex disc on my aching left shoulder, and guess what? Now I can report I'm sleeping better and just about pain-free. You know, the technology at TriVortex is a revolutionary process in health and wellness. And way back in 1988, owner and inventor Brian David Anderson looked long and hard for an inexpensive way to get better hydration out of normal drinking water. And the rest, folks, is history, leading to one product after another for natural, fast pain relief, reduced negative effects from cell phones and smart meters, and cutting-edge benefits for skin and body care. And in these times of medical and economic uncertainty, that's why it's up to you to look for innovative ways to keep you and your family safe. And TriVortex has figured out a way without ingesting dangerous fluids and pills to maintain and improve high levels of water hydration, maximizing your ability to retain the necessary vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And if you believe in the old adage, 
that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure, you have to try the innovative health products at TriVortex. That's T-R-I-V-O-R-T-E-X dot com. Proud sponsor of The Greg Anthony Show. I'm Dave Hull. How'd you like to receive your very own autographed copy of my award-winning book, Hullabaloo, The Life and Misadventures of Me, L.A. radio legend Dave Hull? I'll sign it for you personally at a specially reduced $30 CRN digital talk radio price. All you have to do is call the Dave Hull Group, 760-320-4434, 760-320-4434. We're waiting for your call right now. How would you like to get a free IRS deduction, possibly saving hundreds of dollars on your taxes, and do something good? If you've got an old car, you can donate it to help veterans. It's a pain to try and sell a car yourself. So, pick up your phone and make a free call to Veteran Car Donations. They'll come and get your vehicle within a few days for free and give you a receipt to use for your tax refund. Of course, check with your accountant for details. Now is the perfect opportunity to help veterans and get rid of an old car. Veteran car donations will come and get it for free. We only ask for two minutes of your time right now on the phone to get the whole process started. So please help the vets and make this free call now. 800-253-1892. 800-253-1892. 800-253-1892. That's 800-253-1892. One eight nine two. Here's important new information from the Diabetes Solution Center for you, a family member, or a loved one suffering with diabetes. If you have lost your provider or if you need a provider for diabetic supplies, you may qualify to receive your diabetic testing supplies now with little or no out-of-pocket cost, regardless of your age. All you need is Medicare or private insurance to be potentially eligible. Call the Diabetes Solution Center right now for details. Just takes a couple of minutes. Our friendly, knowledgeable agents will give you free, no obligation information, handle all the insurance paperwork, and make sure your supplies are delivered directly to your door for free. Call U.S. Medical Supply 24 hours a day. 888-912-1332. 888-912-1332. 888-912-1332. Call right now, 888-912-1332. Okay, folks, Greg Anthony here on the Greg Anthony Show. And stay tuned. I've got a guest. And the reason I do is because I'll tell you what. After two months of sitting around doing nothing, I'm going out of my mind, and I need someone to keep me focused. Yes, I brought Brian David Anderson, and he's sponsoring my show for a while. And he's got some real – I've known Brian for 20 years, and we've talked about some of the craziest things. But you know what? They turned out to be pretty darn interesting. And Brian, I always said, when I think I know everything, I call on Brian. And his products – I really did try one. It's a disc. And I said, okay, Brian – You're going to tell me to put this disc, and he's listening on my shoulder because it's hurting. And you know, it worked. I I mean that. And it's still, it's a little stiff the other day. I put it on again. It's fine. And Brian has started out, listen to this. And I brought that up, that fear of germs for a reason. And once I get Brian on, we're going to talk about that. But anyway, Brian, how are you doing today? And I wanted to spend a little time on TriVortex before we get into you know, this, if I hear COVID virus one more time, I am going to commit suicide. I won't need any cure. Go ahead. The Trivortex, tell, tell us a little bit about that, because there are some people out there looking for some kind of relief during this time with their pains and aches and things. So help us out a little bit. Go ahead. Well, yeah, if you're having any type of respiratory stress or any digestive types of problems and you're wanting to improve your quality of life, We have, uh, at TriVortex, we have uh, several different types of items that are very reasonably priced. They last a long time, the last years. And uh, uh, basically, the the goal there is to improve the quality of life. And 
it, when you go up there and look at it, all the various types of people that have uh, written in and said this has happened, that's happened, uh, this, that, and the other, then uh, you know it, it's more than uh, just you know Greg and Brian talking about it. There's a lot of other people that have experienced it. Yeah, I know so when you started also, out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, again, I would like to cut the short a little bit on the Trivortex because there's something else. Yes, we're not going to talk too much about COVID, but there's something else that needs to be addressed. And All right, that, go right ahead. That is that um, what would be also the purpose of this? What would be the long-term purpose? In the last couple of days, things have maybe come a little bit more in focus, at least for me. And the, some right. of the intelligence that I'm getting through other people is that there is a whole bunch of things going on in Iran right now that we're not being told. And okay. uh, then also Henry Kissinger made a, a statement two days ago, and it, I don't have the exact quote here in front of me now, but basically we're saying uh, if the world uh, after this coronavirus, that there is no new world order, uh, the world will be on fire. Mm-hmm. And so and basically what he's saying, well, if we don't get our way, then we're going to burn it down, you know, we'll, we'll okay. that type of thing. So uh, then we have another event of, uh, you know, all the reports coming back now where farmers are being told not to farm. Uh, the meat industry is toast right now. And now that's weird. I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't believe that. I mean, if it's an epidemic, why? Why? Go ahead. Yeah. And so that's to me is that. Well, we're, we just got to think about this, and it, it's, it's doomsday type of thing, but it has to be brought up, is that are we getting set up for this false flag war, most likely to be an aircraft carrier or something that will be attacked and we'll lose a bunch of soldiers, and then everybody will want to go fight the war. And um, I believe that this is going to be set up so that we lose that war. And then that makes us vulnerable to invasion. And now there's a whole bunch of guns here in this country, and they'd have a lot of problem. But if the people that are having the guns, they don't have any food, then they're very mm-hmm. vulnerable. So to me, uh, you know, again, I can't think of anything more traitorous than right now. That's what is it, this comes from the top down, from it goes from Hillary to Kissinger to Trump to everybody. It, it, this is basically, it seems to me, that the pieces are getting um, are setting in place for a war. We lose that war, we get invaded, and we have no resources because we're all starving. And that's for yeah. I mean, I, and we've got to look at that. Definitely, I got to look at everything now. I mean, it's it's just to to shut the world down over this. There's got to be. I think what it did for me. Well, and for people that listen to my show for a number of years, uh, I always t- t- you know, told people, I think, you know, and I just laid it out on the table. Just let me put this information on the table that there is a, there is a connection between all the leaders in the world. And they're all working together, of course, in, the, in public. They're arguing and we seem to be fighting. But we are not looking at one country here, one country there. They're setting us up for something. And this this proves, I think, look at all the world. They just fell like dominoes. When everybody said, shut the world down, they just, okay, we'll do it. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, that's where, again, that's, uh, there was some also the preconditioning that there has been with movies and uh, you know, things like Outbreak and you know all these various things to get people conditioned into it. And uh, the, basically, the, the still a lot of people in post-traumatic stress disorder over 9/11. I mean, that still really is you know, for our age and maybe 20 years younger. That's still uh, something that we, you know, I don't feel the, the the soul of the psyche of the United States has been still scarred by that. So they mm-hmm. they uh, they masterfully played this. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and I can't, you know, I I said, you know, Trump, here's the deal, and I'd like to get this out on the table, and I know that people like to take sides, and when I said when Trump was elected, I said, you know, this guy's a great entertainer, and in fact, before this COVID thing, it's, it's fun to listen to the guy, but realizing that both the Democrats and Republicans have to high work together, 
And they just play this, and I like to use the word Hegelian dialectic, which means that the left fights the right, but really at the top, they're working together to get their synthesis. And so I look at Trump basically as an actor put there to basically build America up, but yet to bring it down so quickly in the hopes and dream. Listen, we got a population right now not ready for anything. What do you think? Yeah, that's, you know, again, uh, and also, too, the other players is that basically the leaders on Iran and all the Middle East, they're still on the same team. They just basically they're they're controlled by the same people. And we always we know who they are. Uh, it's, uh, you know, a, a, a major street in Rome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and, oh, yeah. And there's a statue in front of this one building with a person with his foot on the throat of another. And uh, <laughs> so uh, that basically tells it all right there. Yeah, and I used to say to people, because people over the years, I thought I had a right to talk about this because I, I lived in Italy for seven years as a journalist and worked in Rome and learned a lot of things. So I was bringing some experience to their chicanery, to their criminal activities, to their money laundering, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, then made some connections here in America with the, the, the politicians and how America was formed. And I would get such feedback, you know, some blowback, like you hate Catholics. I said, I was a Catholic. And what I tried to do is always say this and, and bring some facts to the table and say, listen, let's talk about this. I don't, I'm not telling you to believe it, but what made me suspicious is that usually what's not talked about therein lies the problem and perhaps the truth in your thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, it, it, they've played it beautifully. I mean, they they have there there really is no sides. Uh, they they've <laughs> um, it, it's all artificial, and they've done that again for uh, they're the ones that came up with the globe Earth, uh, and mm -hmm. you know the, uh, that's very important. Also, is that we don't even know most people don't even know or they're confused about what type of shape that we have for our our living what we live on and right so you know just go down to the real basics and all the way then to the intricacies and uh that's one thing over the last couple of years especially after i got into flat earth got into tartaria got into a lot of stuff and i always considered myself a history buff and i have to look back at it now and you know kind of stuff the ego and look and say oh man <laughs> we really don't know what our history is it is so convoluted, so upside down that it's just uh, – mm -hmm. and that's part of the thing also is people don't really – they think they know their history, but it's so false. And that's also – if they knew the real history, um, uh, you know, I think things would be a lot different. Well, yeah, you know, people are lost for lack of knowledge. And basically, we rely, and this is a perfect example, this COVID-19, everybody's listening to these supposed know-it-alls, you know, and science and everything. And it, it's, and you see what's happened. I mean, people are just uh, propagandized to death here. But that doesn't just happen here. It happens in most everything that comes out of Washington. And I mean, we have lost, the one thing they don't want are thinking people who question everything. And that's exactly what they want to get rid of. And they want to basically shut people up. And this is doing a good job. Listen, the other day I sent out an article to somebody on some doctors that were really questioning whether this really, this vi the reaction to this virus was, was merited. And I put a link to a doctor named Dr. Look her up. She's pretty good. Dr. Um, Tenpenny is her last name. What? And they, they, they blocked me. They said, your information on that email is hazardous to the people's health of America. Oh, I said, really? Okay. I haven't heard that one. Well, it was their COVID-19 that was their COVID-19 uh, sanitization of, of the Internet, you know. But uh, the you know what really shows me something here? And what's really interesting is that throughout the years, I've had really conservative friends who have not bought a word I've said and will not uh, get them past that system of their belief systems. And, you know, now some of the same people are calling me going, Greg, you know, what do you think? Maybe what you're saying was right. And I said, it's not a question of right or wrong. It's a question of you 
being able to to look at all avenues and say, what do you think is happening here? <laughs> this is not normal. And so maybe this, the positive side to this could be that it maybe wakes up a number of people to to wake up out of that sleep and start really looking at what the heck is going on to our country. I know you've done that a long time ago, yeah. but I think we have to look at that and try to help along a few people that may be interested, don't you? Don't you think yeah, so? You know, again, um, contemplating that I think the next logical move that they've got to do right now is to get a war going. And then that's going to be the excuse. I mean, uh, you know, enjoy what we're doing right now, people, because once they <laughs> declare that war, they'll probably declare martial law in the United States and shut down the Internet. They'll shut down a lot of things. A lot of freedom of speech will go once they declare the war. And yeah, because never, I mean, we'll it's never get it back. Yeah, I mean, I've talked to a conservative friend the other day, and we had a nice conversation over the phone. And he said, I know you've always talked about this one world government. And I said, well, all you got to do is look at what they've written. I mean, what they have say. I mean, you got to understand, I mean, you can go back to George Bush Sr. and some of his comments. I mean, I'm not saying it, but I'm saying people just can't believe that these people would actually do this to a country. Well, you're seeing it right now. And not only to a country, but to a world. Right. I mean, think about this. Think about this. I got an email from a friend in Guatemala, right? We don't think about this. And he said, you know, this is serious here. We got the government coming with their machine, you know, machine guns and government coming down the streets of these little towns where people rely on food daily. They they make money daily to eat. Not like us. We got a little store, you know, we got a little time, right? A couple of months, maybe some people, maybe a month. Uh but anyway, they said they don't let people out and they can't buy any food. There's going to be thousands dying from starvation Probably. here in Guatemala. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Americans. I mean, what Americans are going to really, I mean, right now everybody's afraid to go out because they're going to get a cough. Can you imagine if there's some kind of conflict? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. Well, yeah. Well, they come out then and try to, you know, defend their property and their land and everything. And also, I got another uh, part of my intelligence is that uh, in Quito, Ecuador, uh, again, you're talking about right on the equator, and you're talking one of the highest cities in the world. And what do mm -hmm. they do? They put in a massive 5G, which, again, now they can broadcast that good old 60 gigahertz. And according yeah. to it's a friend of a friend, you know, type of thing like what you have in Guatemala type thing. And I get what they're saying is people are dropping dead in the streets in Quito. Well, nobody this 5G things and I know what people are saying. Well, I can get the movie really fast now. <laughs> but this is a military weapon when you start right. looking at it. The, the well, microwaves coming out of this thing. The 60 gigahertz yeah. is the whole thing is that what it allows them to do is they can broadcast between 29 and 35. That's what they're, you know, licensed to do, and that's still not really great for you. But then they can pop that 60 gigahertz on anytime they want to create a small little, uh, uh, you know, pandemic in a little area and get it going. That's what I think they did in Wuhan, is they turned it on a little bit, turned it off, and that took every, that's what got everything, took, you know, it took off from there. Yeah, that's a story that hasn't been covered much, but that 5G, and I started reading it, is very, very dangerous. And I know, you know, there's AT&T, it's all over America now. And I think people got to realize that, look at the military aspect of this. It's a weapon. It's not an internet that's going to make you watch movies quicker. <laughs> well, that's also, again, now a combination of people are starving right. and got... 60 gigahertz and they got an invading force coming on okay three minutes back with brian david anderson If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. 
And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. This is the Entertainment Answer. If there is a bright side to all this shelter-in-place time, it is that you can catch up on all the great movies hitting Blu-ray and digital. Just Mercy, rated PG-13, is now on digital and releases on Blu-ray and DVD April 14th. It is a powerful film based on the story of an innocent man sitting on death row and the young lawyer in search of justice. It was one of my top films of last year and a must-watch for fans of legal dramas. Again, Just Mercy. For this Entertainment Answer, I'm Matt Mungle. Hey folks, Greg Anthony here, and I'm a firm believer in looking outside the box when it comes to keeping myself healthy, wealthy, and wise. And that's why I recommend you turn to a company called TriVortex Technology. And lately, I tried a TriVortex disc on my aching left shoulder, and guess what? Now I can report I'm sleeping better and just about pain-free. You know, the technology at TriVortex is a revolutionary process in health and wellness. And way back in 1988, owner and inventor Brian David Anderson looked long and hard for an inexpensive way to get better hydration out of normal drinking water. And the rest, folks, is history, leading to one product after another for natural, fast pain relief, reduced negative effects from cell phones and smart meters, and cutting-edge benefits for skin and body care. And in these times of medical and economic uncertainty, that's why it's up to you to look for innovative ways to keep you and your family safe. And TriVortex has figured out a way without ingesting dangerous fluids and pills to maintain and improve high levels of water hydration, maximizing your ability to retain the necessary vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And if you believe in the old adage, that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure, you have to try the innovative health products at TriVortex. That's T-R-I-V-O-R-T-E-X dot com. Proud sponsor of The Greg Anthony Show. Okay. Greg Anthony here, back on the Greg Anthony Show every Friday night, 7 to 8 p.m. Come back. Come back. We just got started here on CRN, but it's turned out pretty good. Anyway, before I get back to Brian David Anderson, a couple plugs. Uh, go to my website at greganthonysjournal.wordpress.com. Also, I do a show daily, uh, Monday through Friday, on First Amendment Radio. Yes, we still have a First Amendment. Yes, right. <laughs> but anyway... We try, and I wanted to mention this. Go there because uh, I do a lot of uh, writing on the side, and I'm working on a uh, kind of a piece called uh, Slats Grobnik's Second Slats Grobnik's Second American Revolution, and you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Just read some of the stories, and I'm working on it daily, and uh, turning it into an interesting thing. And I'm going to give you a little tip: when there's nowhere to go in America. Nowhere to go in the world. Slats has figured out a place. So go to greganthonysjournal.wordpress.com. Also, go to trivortex.com. And that's uh, my friend here, Brian David Anderson's company. He's been doing this for 20 years, helping people. And I checked Brian out a long time ago, and there's a lot of people that come to him. He's been featured on a number of uh, TV shows, uh, NBC and Palm Springs somewhere, other places. And uh, he's a real deal. It's some interesting things. Sometimes people have Brian. Do you ever get people that kind of speculative over your stuff? And how have you oh, overcome yeah, that? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, because again, it's uh, totally um, on a different type of level because it's subtle energy. There's no contraindications. And uh, when you people hear that, well, wait a minute. It's you know, it's not a knife and it's not a pill, and uh, it's not heat, and I'm not going to get burned. And mm-hmm. there's no contraindications that. 
that sort of you know, and say no, there's not, and but it does work. And uh, people have to go through a paradigm shift a little bit. A lot of people don't, but then there's enough now where they haven't gotten the answers from traditional um, types of ways, and uh, they have nothing to lose because again, it's not going to harm, uh, uh, and it's either going to work or it doesn't. All right. Well, listen, I have, you know, we only got a few minutes. I, I have to ask you this. In my in my first uh, segment, in the first half hour, I brought up this thing. I said, watch out, Americans, because this $1,200 payoff, it's kind of like a mafia payoff or something, is going to have strings attached. And I'm telling you, I'm worried about it. Everybody I talk to, oh, well, well, at least we're getting a little bit of money. Look at how nice they are to us. What's your thought on this, Brian? I mean, I don't like it. Uh, well, I really I mean, don't. <laughs> but what, what it, it, it's just so absurd. Twelve thousand dollars, yes. Uh, One hundred and twenty thousand dollars, maybe. But twelve hundred. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe if it's a per month. But I understand this is just a one-time payment, and somehow right. for ten weeks or ten months, you're supposed to survive on twelve hundred dollars, and uh, for a lot of people, that's just barely going to do the gasoline and the groceries. And the utilities, not including your rent or your your mortgage or whatever it is. So it's really, to me, a joke. Yeah, it is. And also this, watch out, because what that tells me is this thing's not ending quickly. You know, yeah. you're not going to be able to go out and play tomorrow. But anyway, Brian, listen, I want to tell you, go to TriVortex.com. Brian David Anderson here. We got 60 seconds, Brian. Any last words on this uh, COVID-19 I call well, it a kind thing of a scam. Be, as I said, what's come have, coming to the light in the last 20 or last couple of days is that just watch out now for anything that's going to happen in a military type of way. And it's going to be 100, 100% false flag. Uh, just like the whole crisis situation right now, it's going to be one crisis on the other. And hey, Brian. it's totally made up. All right. Thank you. Hey, listen, come back next week to Greg Anthony's show, CRN 3, 7 p.m. Pacific time. And listen, folks, thanks for coming. Come back again.